All right, I got two handcuffs here that you will definitely be interested Ooh, in. Ooh, why is that? They were a gimmick for Houdini. No way. It's a Remington revolver. Whoa. Once again, I'll be risking my life with a death-defying escape. My name is Steve Santini. I buy and sell the darkest, most gruesome artifacts on the planet. Welcome to the dark side. relic shock i freaked out i was like a kid in a candy store this is wild the place was full of thousands of relics and artifacts i loved it mastodon too check it out look at the molar it's freaking huge oh my god what is that what do you think it is well yeah i know but it's some sort of a fertility vessel whoa whoa whoa, whoa. guns 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 pistolas check it out there's a cool piece up here that was dug so that's definitely Civil War. Came right out of the ground in that condition. And actually, I'm starting to wonder about buying that as well. This is fantastic. Howdy. 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 You've got an amazing place here. I was wondering if there's anything you had here that you considered to be a little bit of a dark antique or kind of creepy you could show me. Uh, I have a uh, Mississippian culture uh, head pot. Head pot? Uh-huh. This is... Uh, a custom that the uh, Native Americans had. Whenever someone died, they would make a effigy, right, mm -hmm. of that person. So a puffed up face. So that's why this appears as a puffed up, decayed human. Wow. I mean, how old do you put this? That would be 1,500, 2,000 years old or so. What would you be asking for something like something that? Something like that, I, I'm sorry to say, but that would run you around ten or $12,000. Now, I'd sit down and deal with you. I mean, the best I could do, maybe seven? I can't do that. That's... Can you do ten? I can do eight. That's, that's about the best I can do, or I'm out of the game. 8,500, take it with you. <sighs> That's that's my that's my final price. Eighty-two. Eighty-two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Man, hey, you are hard. I'm, I'm taking the beating on it. Eighty-two fifty. All right. Okay. Okay. It's yours. And now I'm broke. Thank you. Well, now I can pay my bills and my help. Steph, we're gonna have a talk. You know that ancient skeleton we're getting from South America? Yeah. I see on the list it hasn't arrived here yet, and uh, has Customs got their hands on it or what? I can call them today, we can figure it out. Thanks a lot. But you know what's more important right now? What? We don't know what's going on with your escape yet. I've been trying to talk to you Relax. the whole time. No, Relax. No, no, no. This is like life and death for you yeah, here. Hey, and they're all life and death. Steve was recently named the world's most extreme escape artist by Ripley's, and there's good reason for that. He's about to tackle another one. I'll admit it. Every time I step out to do a death-defying escape, I'm a little bit nervous. Who in their right mind wouldn't be? Hey, Bob, right on. Guys, can I have a couple minutes with Bob? Steve, hey, how are you? See ya. You brought Good some you. cups for me, eh? Yes, I did. Awesome. I've known Bob Katsopoulos since we were both teenagers. He's a handcuff collector and an ace magician in his own right. You're still collecting, correct? If they're historical, absolutely. All right, I got two handcuffs here that you will definitely be interested in. Ooh, old Darby's, eh? Adjustable Victorian Darby's. Right on. And a pair of Froggins. Those are nice. Now, these are a special pair of Froggins. Why is that? One, they're gimmicked. Okay. Two, they were gimmicked for Houdini. 
No way. I'm not kidding you. Harry Houdini was my boyhood idol. Owning an actual pair of Houdini handcuffs would be like climbing Mount Everest for me. What are you asking for both? For both pair, I'd like to get 6,000. Oh, man. Are these both Houdini handcuffs? No, these, I'm saying these are Houdini's cuffs. Right. These had no connection to Houdini. You say they're tricked. They're gimmicked? These are gimmicked. To allow a uh, quick release? Yep. No keys? No keys. No picks? No picks. So they wrap open, right? Very good. Can I try it? Absolutely. Not going to break my wrist, am I? No. Nope. So if they had a full spring, I'd break my wrist. OK, here goes. Let's see it. Just like that. Well done. Awesome. Awesome. They are gimmicked. And still, they stay locked. Yep. Oh, wow. This is incredible. Tell you what. Can I borrow these? I want to take this pair, right, and this pair okay. to a couple of experts and see if we can get some more info on the story. No problem. Super. Just remember, problem. Steve, you break them, you buy them. My first stop to authenticate these alleged Houdini handcuffs will be the Houdini attraction at Scranton, PA. Dorothy Dietrich and Dick Brooks run the Houdini attraction. They are great characters, wonderful people, and probably the most hardcore Houdini fans I've ever met. I really feel that Houdini changed my life, that he gave me a direction to go. Oh, man, look at this place. This is an amazing collection. There was a little ad in the paper, a little, little tiny ad that said, contents of Houdini's home, Houdini artifacts. I was crazy for the personal stuff. These are very precious to me. Those two pictures, that's Houdini's mother and father, those pictures were on his mantle wow. in his living room. This is incredible. I mean, for a guy like me, this is like Mecca coming here. Oh, thank you. And this is the water torture cell. Is this, is this the, one of the originals? This is not one of the originals. But it, it, you yourself, this though, have been in it. This is how it would look. Yes, I've done this. Oh, my gosh. So. This is the loneliest place on the earth to be. I just don't like it. I don't like it. It's a horrible feeling. I mean, I, I did one for years in my show, and I actually, I died in this thing. These are great. These are probably one of the best ones you want for movie props. We have been working on a project, and we want you to be a part of it. Oh, oh man. That is just out of the realm. These are a special pair of frogets. Why is that? They were a gimmick for Houdini. No way. And this is the water torture cell. I did one for years in my show, and I actually I died in this thing. And they pulled the curtain in front, and they were playing loud music. Oh, so my... they, your staff couldn't even hear you. Yeah, and I knew right away that the, this is the thing that I had to do wasn't working. And I woke up in intensive care. I was dead. It scares the crap out of me, to be honest. It's awful. Excuse me for a minute. Just yeah. a minute. Being that close to it brought it all back. Pardon me. Just something popped back in my head. Let's talk about something else, OK? Yeah, OK, yeah. Yeah, you're here, buddy. You're here. You made it. I know. I brought the handcuffs to Dorothy Sudini attraction because I know one of her best friends, Stephen Moore, is a master locksmith and a collector of antique handcuffs. Actually, these are great. These are probably one of the best ones you want for movie props. It's really, yeah. okay. <laughs> they're nothing. They're, they're, uh, they're a great imitation, but there's nowhere near or comparance to an authentic frog. It, they look good, but they're not. The first pair of handcuffs are fakes. They're not even Victorian. Now, these Whoa. are, without a closer look, I'd have to see that they're Froggett or Darby, but they're that style. Right. Now, with a closer look, 
What are you looking for, Steve? You what I'm looking at here is this is where the handcuff was assembled. Yeah. Now, this was pressed in right. and then peened with a designated tool made by Frog. So that's where those crow's feet designs are on the... Yes, and okay. they are they are Frog authentic markings. They're a definite Frog. It's a number three. I'm going to just check the spring tension now. Uh, it seems to be a weak spring. Okay. So the weaker the spring, the easier they be to open. Right. Okay, we know they're authentic frogget. Right. We know they're a small size. We know they're of the right time period. And we know they're gimmicked to open that way. Right. Could there be a chance that these were owned by Harry Houdini himself? My personal opinion, and it's very hard to say at anything at 100%, sure. unless you had forensic documentation, right. I would say they're a good 90 to 95% authentic. Awesome. Thanks, Steve, so much for your expertise. Yep. Well, I haven't done the deal yet, but <laughs> hopefully once deal. I do, um, they end up in my collection. Meeting Steve Moore was fantastic. I mean, the guy shared a lot of information that now has me believing these handcuffs could have actually belonged to Harry Houdini. And then, to top it all off, Dorothy Dietrich had an incredible surprise for all of us. We have been working on a project, a Houdini project, of course, that is very special to my heart, and we want you to be a part of it. So we are going to take you to Houdini's grave. No way. You know, the bus that has not been there for many years? Of his head that stood on top head. of the grave, right? We've been working on getting the bus back and placing it back on the grave. Oh, I've got, I've got, look at the goosebumps. I, I've got goosebumps. This is cool. That's awesome. I can't believe that I'm going to Houdini's grave. I mean, this is something I wanted since I was a little kid. This is Christmas for me, man. This is like the best day I've had in ages. To be there when we physically pulled the mold off the bust and to see the face of my mentor from a young boy, it was amazing. I was staring into the face of a legend. This is how you planned it. This is the way it should be. This is the moment of a lifetime. The moment we've all been waiting for. For so many years, Harry, you haven't been here where you belong. There you go, Harry. Right where you should be. Look at that. Oh, oh man. You have an audience, Harry. <laughs> Look at this. You, you know that Houdini used to produce an eagle yes. in one of his stage routines, exactly. right? Yes. Exactly. That looked a lot like that. Yeah. It is. Oh. <laughs> and his full evening show. Is that this you, is, Harry? This is no <laughs> way. It couldn't be a bigger sign. Wow. <laughs> that is just out of the realm. It's a Victorian, their late Victorian. Right. Maybe even as late as 1950. The way most people go to these kinds of things, because not because they want to see you get out, they want to see you get hurt. <laughs> All right, I got two handcuffs here that you will definitely be interested Ooh, in. Ooh, why is that? They were a gimmick for Houdini. No way. Owning an actual pair of Houdini handcuffs would be like climbing the Mount Everest for me. Could there be a chance that these were owned by Harry Houdini himself? I would say they're a good 90 to 95% authentic. Awesome. Lloyd's one of these amazing old world blacksmiths. I mean, there's guys that make horseshoes and forge iron nails, but Lloyd, one of the reasons I think he could figure out these handcuffs is he could look at something like this and actually make it. Here's the first pair, if you can tell the age of them or... Um, is they're Victorian, they're late Victorian, um, but I sooner think they're uh, more uh, into this century. Right. Maybe even late as 1950. 
what what gives me the clue is kind of like there's there's a settling torch here and that kind of thing this this torch brazing wasn't done in victorian times it was all okay. done with one of these gadgets from a, a blacksmith forge so where do you think those might have been made i mean it, probably india india if you know something about the technology and you recognize the material then uh, you've got a kind of a leg up as to uh, what uh, what's a fake and what isn't well that brings me to the second pair and maybe oh, these oh, might be a little okay. bit different yes, this, this, these definitely are a little different oh for sure for sure and instead of being engraved there's a little stamp three they take the time to make a little stamp in stamp it where this is engraved crudely engraved as an imitation of this okay there are little serifs on the letters so that's sort of a mid-19th century uh, leader so. how old do you think they are um well they could be uh, 1850 1870 somewhere's in there yeah. well that would certainly fit with what uh -huh. the seller's telling me right what i've been told is those were a pair of handcuffs made by thomas froggett was an English handcuff maker uh -huh. for Harry Houdini because well, well. they became friends. All the evidence is stocked up. I mean, this is like one piece that was missing out of the puzzle, and you've uh, you've solved the mystery for us. Lloyd stated the metal on these handcuffs to Houdini's period, and of course I want to buy them for my collection. But first, I have to decide what escape I'm going to choose for an upcoming performance. Guys, you know, time's running out. I've got that corporate event coming up. They want an escape. I want to give them something really extreme. So, uh, you know, Charles, you pulled out three of the nasty ones from storage. Got the boots, lobotomy, and ripper. Death, death, hurt. Hell, thanks a lot. Should be between these two. Oh, you know, I'm not keen on doing this. The last time we did it, you know, I had an accident. It came too close. I mean, most people go to these kinds of things because not because they want to see you get out. They want to see you get hurt yeah. or, in this case, die. Um, all right, one last time. After this, it's retired. Okay, that's it. Good stuff. So these well, are the things you're choosing from for your escape? It's going to be the Ripper. That thing. This is only part of it. There's a big conveyor belt, and the motor's dragging those slowly towards my face. So these things, like, go into your face. And, look, you know, and you're like, yes, right? You realize I'm, like, picking up your daughter and bringing her to the show, right? Like, yeah. She's, like, watch she's this never thing. seen you do she's this before. She's never seen me do this before. It's a scary one. After leaving Richard's relics, I just couldn't get that gun out of my mind. I simply had to go back in and try and get it. Oh, wow, this is a desert relic. And some of these old desert relics bring some big money. It's a Remington revolver found at the site of the Battle of the Little Bighorn, Custer's last stand. Whoa. It has a good history. I've got a thousand in it. What can you give over that? They're fakes. No way that these are fakes. Could there be a chance that these were owned by Harry Houdini himself? I would say they're a good 90 to 95 percent authentic. Awesome. So well, these are the things you're choosing from for your escape? It's going to be the Ripper. Yeah. It's a Remington revolver. Whoa. Aside from that note, do you have any more provenance on this? I mean, did he, is there any papers that came with this? Well, no, not really. That, that's the best I can do for yeah. you. So it's an oral history that came down with the piece? Yes. What are, you, what are you asking for this piece? Well, I've got a thousand in it. What can you give over that? Over a thousand? I've got to make some profit. As you should. But I'd need, I'd need some more paper on that to go, you know, to go up on it. What can you do on it? I was thinking, I was going to offer 500 for it. 
because we just can't put it on that battlefield. If we could, gosh, I'd, I'd be willing to pay much higher for it. I'd go 500 for it. Okay, You're, you you bought the head pot, didn't you? I did buy the head pot. Six. Five fifty. I'll do it. Done. Right on. Cool. It's a great piece. Oh, super. Thank you, Richard. Well, you got to be on that one. Well, thank you. <laughs> next, well, next one's on me. Okay. <laughs> All right, we'll do. Thanks a lot. Good stuff. Of course, with anything I buy, these handcuffs included, I always try and prove it 100%. But hey, none of us were alive back then. None of us knew Houdini. We proved it, I believe, 99.9%. .9%. And that other percent, well, I'll go with my gut. Now it's time for me to meet with Bob and tell him what I found out about the two pairs of handcuffs. Well, there's good news and there's bad news. What you want first? Uh, let's do the bad news first. Okay. These, you were told, are Victorian period derbies. That's right. They're fakes. Are you kidding me? No, I'm serious. This pair of cuffs were made in India. I don't believe that, Steve. There's no way that these are fakes. The way that they're made, the way that they function, even the way the end caps are compared to the frog, it's, it's a stamping here of punch holes. Here it's a, you know, fine crow's foot stamp. These things are not period. They're not old. Enough about those. These, we've determined the way they're put together, they were gimmicked at the factory. That means that Thomas Froggett made these this way just for one important client, and that man was Harry Houdini. But I'm not going to give you six grand. I can't do six grand because these are out of the equation now. I really just want those. Okay. Um, I think what are you willing to pay for them? <sighs> 2200 bucks. Oh, Steve, I can't do $2,200. There's no way. I'll, I'll keep them for $2,200. Come on. How does 4000 sound for them? I get, you know, I squeeze 2500 bucks. Steve, 20... Steve, for 2500 bucks, I'll keep them. I don't want to let them go. I appreciate the offer, but sell it. All right, tell, you, tell, tell you what, tell you what. OK, your yeah. friend of mine, they belong in your collection, Steve. I will do three thousand, and that's that's the bottom rock bottom price. Three grand, you got a deal. All right, man. That's Thanks, great. Bob. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. I am just blown away that I now own a set of authentic Houdini handcuffs. I mean, there's nothing closer to my heart than owning something performed with by the most iconic escape artist in history. I brought my daughter along to this escape because I don't spend much time with her. I'm always on the road. This was a chance for her to share the emotions that I feel. You scared? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I wish sometimes he didn't, but like I understand because like this is what he wants to do. This is his decision. Is lethal. It scares the crap out of me. If I don't get the thumb cuffs off, I'm dead. If I can't use those to pick the handcuffs and get them off, I'm dead. And if I can't unbuckle the neck strap in time, I'm dead. Pull the pin.
see Houdini's gravesite was a childhood dream, and it was really touching for me. And then pulling off the escape that I just did and hearing the audience cheer, I pictured how he must have felt when the audience just cheered and screamed after he cheated death. I was close to him at the gravesite, and I was even closer to him tonight. For more information, go to oln.ca.